How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome back to another Streamlabs OBS tutorial video. If you are new to the channel or new to the series and you're wanting to learn the stream or understand the technical side of streaming, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. Also, you can follow me on my other networks inside the video description below. And today's video, we're going to be talking about the stream settings. So to get to this window here, to at least open up the settings, you're going to go down to the bottom left hand corner where there is a little gear. And you're going to click on that little guy. It's going to bring this up. We'll go to stream. Now, this is very, very basic stuff. There's two things here, though. You have your stream type, and that's got two different options for you. You have your stream services, and then you have custom streaming server. So for streaming services, this will be stuff like Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, Facebook, Restream, Periscope, Twitter, all that stuff. You go and choose whichever one you're streaming on. If you're streaming on any of these, great. If not, if you don't see the option, then we got to use the custom streaming server. But before we go and show you that, or before I show you that, um, what I want to also show you here is you have different types of servers you can choose from. So choose the one that's closest to you or set it to automatic. And then your stream key, this is where you're going to take it from the site that you're streaming on, whether it's Mixer or Twitch, wherever, and you're going to go and plug it in here. Now, if you need to use the custom HT, or I'm um, sorry, um, RTMP, you're going to use the custom streaming server and then you need to put in the URL and then the streaming key and then that will be good. Now the URL is the RTMP server URL and then the streaming key here and then you're good to go. So I'll move my stuff back over to Twitch. No, it deleted my stream key. <laughs> it's fine. Let's go get another one. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to move on down to output. So output is going to give you two options. Okay, so you have simple, which is going to be something basically like this, which really isn't that bad. You, you should be able to get everything started on this. But if you're wanting to have a bit more of options for you, which can be a little intimidating, we can go to advanced. So let's take a look at simple first. So you got stuff for streaming, you got stuff for recording, and you got stuff for replay buffer. So for streaming, your bitrate, the easiest way to explain this is one, have a wired connection. Wired is 100,000% like so much better than Wi-Fi because it's more of a consistent bandwidth stream compared to Wi-Fi. So have a wired connection if able. And you want to make sure you go to like speedtest.net, figure out what your stream or your, what your internet speed is. And then from there, you're going to want to determine how much you can actually take from your internet speed to provide it for your streaming. And what I mean by this is, let's say you have a 10 upload speed wired. That means you can have a 10,000 bit rate, but you don't want to use the full 10,000. The reason for that is because then you're not going to have enough room for you to be able to use the internet for you to be able to play online. You won't be able to have enough for you to be able to browse the web if you need to use anything. You're, you're basically giving yourself no wiggle room. So you want to kind of figure out like where it's going to be best for you. And having it around 6,000 won't be too bad. If you see some drop frames, bring it down maybe to like 4,000. The other thing you have to also remember too is how you're, how you're having everything set up. And, and, and everything like that. So if you are streaming in 1080p, then yeah, probably having around 4,000, 6,000 bit rate is going to be important. But if you notice that the stream is lagging, maybe bring it down to 720p. No one's going to really tell the giant difference when watching when it's 1080p and when it's 720p. So to make it easier on your computer and to make it easier on the internet and everything like that for you guys, then just go ahead and have it around like 3,500, 4,000. That should that should be a good a, a good mark. It gives you plenty of wiggle space for you to be able to still play online without any lag, being able to browse the web and any other type of web applications that you need to use. It'll give you enough wiggle room for it. Now, for the encoder, there are two different types of encoders. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll have this option here under hardware. If you don't, more likely you're just going to have software. So for software, that's going to be your processor. 
So your computer's processor. And then hardware, again, is your graphics card if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card. I personally do not see a difference between these two, but I use the um, I use software because I have a Ryzen processor. So mine has the whole built-in X264, so it's it's meant for streaming. And then audio bitrate, I just leave it at 160. You don't have to worry about that. Now the recording path. Recording path is if you're wanting to record and stream at the same time, or if you just want to record it and not stream it. You know, you can choose the file path, you can choose the quality of it. So you have different qualities that you can choose from. And then you have the format that you want. You're definitely going to want it to be an MP4 if you're wanting to record anything. And then the replay buffer, I don't even worry about it. I think this is default. I don't touch it. I don't need it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so then if you go over to advanced, advanced is going to be a little scary. So advanced gives you all of this extra stuff, right? So well, this, this might, this might increase the video a little bit. Um, so you have your different audio tracks and then you have the same thing here with the encoder. Now, enforcing streaming service encoding settings, yes, you don't need to rescale. Now, the CBR stands for constant bitrate, so you're going to want to leave it on that. Don't worry about these other guys, just constant bitrate. Now, I have a custom buffer size. Reason for that is if for some reason my internet struggles for 5,000, then I can bring it down to 3,000. It will impact the quality of the stream just slightly but it will make sure that it still keeps a high quality. Now for your keyframes, these are settings that are provided for, uh, for Twitch. So for me, I like having the keyframe set to either one or two. I don't really need my CPU to be straining itself, so I leave it on very fast, but I can definitely drop it um, to like faster or fast, but I don't really see a drastic difference. But here's, here's, the, here's the thing. If you do ultra fast, it's going to use less CPU power, but it's going to also make it very grainy, regardless of how well your bitrate is. So if you don't have a very strong CPU, try using very fast first. If you still have issues with dropping frames, try adjusting the bitrate. If the bitrate adjustment still isn't helping, then you can try to use super fast and then ultra fast. Remember, you're going to be compromising somewhere unless you have a beast of a machine. Now, having your profile set to either main or high or baseline, I really don't see a giant difference between any of them, so I just leave mine on main. I don't touch anything for tune, and then I just make sure that the B frames is equal to 2. So this is actually usually on 2. I don't know why it's on 1, but it's usually on 2. So that is going to be for your streaming now for recording, recording is going to be very similar to how it was before on the simple side. So, you know, you have your standard type because that's the only one they give you. And then you can choose the file path or where you want it to go. You can generate file names without spaces if you want to. And then if you have different audio tracks, you can include them. I just use everything on one audio track. And you can use the stream encoder for recordings. You can rescale if you need to. The custom... Uh, I think it's Muxer settings. I don't even touch this, but I also don't really record anything either. And then for audio, you have the different types of audio tracks. So you can name them whatever they are. You can give them different bit rates for their audios and stuff like that. So you definitely have different options for that. And then your replay buffer brings that back again. But for the most part, this is what you guys are going to be dealing with. And I can't, again, I can't stress enough, make sure you are using a wired connection if possible and just make sure that you have enough bandwidth to be able to do your stream. Because one thing I believe I have it in video, yeah, so this is a different tab, but this does correspond to the output. So I have my base canvas at 1080p but I stream at 720p. The reason for that is because I'm taking this high resolution image and I'm scaling it down to keep the sharpness. 
So then I'm using this right here, the bicubic. So I'm sharpening the scaling. And then I'm using a custom FPS value of 60 frames per second. If you're still having an issue with the stream after you've adjusted the bitrate, after you've adjusted the CPU preset, then you're gonna to wanna to come over here and make sure this guy is set to at least 30 frames per second. Yes, it might be noticeable for some people, but you'd rather have a stream that people can actually watch and not worry so much about it being 60 frames per second or not. So one of the things I didn't show you was the hardware for the NVIDIA. So this one is going to give you different presets. So you're gonna have it to where you can choose these like max quality or you can do low latency and performance and stuff like that. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube that kind of show you the different quality setups, so definitely watch those. And then if you go to new, I don't really see a difference between any of them. I mean, you still have the literally exact same thing for quality, performance, high, and stuff like that. So I don't really see a giant difference between any of them. But like I said, I just stick with this one and then I'm good to go. But you see how it reset all my stuff? So I got to go back in there and put all that stuff back in, <laughs> including my stream key. But yeah, that, that should get you guys at least started for, you know, getting your encoding and everything ready for streaming. So you'll get your stream key in, you'll get your your output and everything like that. And then again, if you go back to video, make sure you have this set up however you want. And then you guys should at least be good to go before having to worry about any of the other stuff here. Um, these other things here are just kind of extras. And I'll go through all these in separate videos. But this should at least get you started. But if you guys have any questions or if there's anything I missed or misinformed, let me know in the comment section below. And also you can follow me over on my other networks, which you'll find in the video description below as well. Feel free to join the Discord and follow me over on Twitch where I stream. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.